Get on back to answer more questions. And he's got a stack printed off. I think every single one of them is first two paid questions. Two in one day. Like I said, two a day is what I want, God damn it. So send it the fuck over. And then all the rest are order questions. This is going to take at least a couple videos because Michael Hedrick alone, that guy asks every goddamn thing under the fucking sun. So um, he's like two questions, two uh, order questions alone, but like literally 10 and 2. So, yeah, we ain't going to answer them all today. So with no further fucking ado, Paid's go to the top of the line. First goddamn paid question is from Jeronimo Jimenez. Hope I'm pronouncing that right, bro town. Hey, j Dog, got a story for the channel. Well, so this ain't much of a question. It's a paragraph, though, so get comfy, goddammit. It's, it's a story time, goddammit. I don't see any question marks, so yeah, it just looks like a story. I'll, I'll comment accordingly, though, because I just skimmed it. I just saw posers and shit like that. Here the fuck we go. It's about the biggest poser that I know. <laughs> so, so to the gym, I usually, I mean, so at the gym, I usually wear band shirts, and I see this 120-pound canoe <laughs> keep staring at me pretty much daily at this point. And one day he comes up to me and says, dude, I love your shirts. Dude, I love that fucking line. I love your shirts. As a matter of fact, I just got it at the, uh, I got it twice in recent times. I got it once at, I think it was Chipotle, and I think I maybe gave him the blow-off answer. But the second time was like like five days or a week after that. So I'm like, I'm just I'm just calling these idiots out. It was at the movie theater, getting the goddamn corn for Equalizer 3, right? Told you I saw that. And of course, Hellcat doesn't really like when I call these fucking idiots out. Ah, oh, very nice. Fuck being nice. I'm tired of these fucking idiots to, with no goddamn personality, just trying to fit in and be cool. Kiddo behind the counter fucking says I was wearing Exum Slaughter Cult. This fucking goddamn bad boy don't listen to no slaughter cult. I could just tell by looking at him. He looks like a fucking pushover that was stuffed in a goddamn garbage can before he got there in high school. So I'm like, no way. There's nothing tough about this, dude. Slaughter cult equals toughness. He's like, yeah. Oh, man. I like your shirt, dude. I was like, oh, yeah? You, you like Exum? He's like, huh? What? I was like, you, 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 like, you like the slaughter cult album? Oh, oh, I, I don't know who it is. I was like, what do you mean? You said you like the shirt. How do, how do you like the shirt if you don't know who the band is? And Lindsay's like, come on, come on, stop. Said he liked my shirt. How do you like it if you don't know it, bro? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I guess I'll check them out. Now you ain't checking shit out. And if you did, it's going to fucking rip your nads off and you ain't going to like it. It's going to de virginize that fucking booty over there. Don't give me that. You like it shit. You don't fucking like it. You're just trying to, you see that you see that the cool guys in the goddamn room, the real metal guys, somebody you don't fucking see, somebody with the only guy in there without the no dumbass brown shirt, Ohio State, or any other fucking Amber Crombie and Fitch, Adidas, or canoe fucking wear of the average person with no goddamn personality, just miserable at their nine to five, fucking looking down the barrel of a gun. That type of fucking lifestyle walk in there. You see the cool motherfucker walk in there and you just want to fit in. Fuck off. You ain't fitting in shit, bra bra. Where the fuck did I leave off on this goddamn, goddamn comments? Uh, love your shirts. What, what, what I tell you? Not even proofread this. What band is that? Thought you liked the shirt, bro. How do you fucking like the shirt? How do you like... That's like me going up to somebody fucking wearing a shirt. I like it. Don't even know what it is. I've, ne I've never done that in my life. Best case scenario, what a respectable response would be is, if you see the design and you like the artworks, I already know there's some fucking idiots yelling at the screen right now. Oh, man, what a fucking jerk. He probably just meant he likes the artwork or he liked the logo. Okay, fair enough. If I saw some artwork or some logo, especially as a kid, and I liked it, thought, oh, that looks cool. What I would do is be like, hey, bro, so what is that? Is that a band or is that a movie? Looks fucking badass. It's a mofo. I got, I got to get me some of that. Who is it? Educate me. Let me know. Where do I get it? Hellsheadbakers.com, goddammit. Something like that. You go and ask. You don't just tell them like you're trying to fit in. So that's all that is. You ain't going to check it out any the fuck way. What band is that? Yep, yep, yep. What band is it? That's for sure. And I was wearing a Nocturnal Mortem shirt. <laughs> he damn sure don't know who the fuck that is. Guaranteed. No way, Jose. Pussy boy at the fucking theater had a better chance of knowing who Exhumed is before this fucking 120 pound fucking pushover knows who Nocturnal Mortal is. No shit and skit, no way in shit ski does he know who that is. Nocturnal Mortal Show I was like, maybe I can show this guy some real metal, so I told him. 
So his girlfriend started talking to my wife, and they became friends. Yep, been there. My wife then decided to invite them over one day. Been there. That's how I fucking got uh, acquainted with fucking Cable Guy. And then literally after one goddamn night of going out bowling that I didn't want to go to, by the way, he thinks we're best fucking buddies, right? He orders the goddamn fucking, he has the audacity to pre-buy fucking uh, Rover tickets. What's Rover tickets? You want a goddamn good motherfucking laugh? I mean, old devils have been watching this channel forever. Know what the fuck I'm already talking about there. Or the story. Google Rover's Morning Glory. It's the biggest fucking canoe goddamn radio podcast you'll ever see or hear in my life in your life. Just listen to the guy's voice, dude. Woo-wee! Bad boy fucking city. I knew in high school, I maybe I wasn't in high school, maybe I was out of high school, but I was a young goddamn buck, 19, 20 years old, somewhere around there. Heard that fucking tool. Dude, knew he sucked that. New dude, who would even listen to this fucking garbage? Telling you right now, bro, Towns, what it is, it's every goddamn fucking Ohio State watching, Browns loving, just literally has no goddamn fucking opinion for themselves, jamming tool, jamming fucking stain, that kind of crap. For sure, what's heavier than Pantera? That's the idiots that listen to that goddamn fucking radio podcast. Just Google it. Trust me. You'll 100% agree with me because a few people already have. And they're like, oh, my God. Dog was 110% right. Any of the fuck who, you want to laugh even goddamn harder. Once this guy blew up, I don't know how many years it took him to blow up, but he's fucking huge here in the land. Just tell you just how fucking douchey people are here. We are here because he's huge over here. People got bumper stickers out the wazoo. He does a fucking music festival every year, right? <laughs> you want to laugh your balls off, just fucking Google Rover Fest and see some of the past bands. Who knows who we had this year or whatever. Machine Gun Kelly, because that's awesome. I never heard it. I don't even need to hear it to know that the dog ain't going to fucking like it. Anyways, this fucking bozo, one night out, fucking cable guy, thinks we're best fucking friends, right? He buys four tickets, one for him and his wife and for me and Lindsay. He goes again, calls me up like he's all stoked, like he's fucking, he got me. Cable guy, like he just loaded my living room up with a goddamn bunch of equipment that I didn't ask to stolen equipment, mind you. Fuck, and he calls me up. Yeah, bro. So make sure Saturday the 14th, August, you're available. And I'm thinking, well, actually, to be honest with you, I don't think I am, but why? Got tickets to fucking Rover Fest. And since we'll be parting at heart, and well, if you do the dog, the dog don't party hard at all. Three beers is parting hard for the dog. He's like, so yes, we'll be parting it hard. Well, I even got us a fucking limo to take us there and back. Fuck me, Dad. I was like, dude, I'm not going to no Roberfest. What do you mean, bro? I was like, that's like, that, that, that stands for everything that I'm against. It's against everything I fucking stand for in this goddamn world. Oh, no, bro. They got totally heavy shit as well. They don't have heavy shit. Not real fucking heavy shit. They, oh, God of Thrones playing there? Ha! He fucking doubt it. I'm not going. And then he got kind of fucking pissy. I'm like, dude, it's not like you asked me. First off, we hung out once. And not, mind you, I put on the fucking, the, the, uh, the uh, friendly face just, just, just to make the wife happy for the night. Do you want to hang out with your dumb ass? And now you're fucking buying tickets. You didn't even ask me. And I do have something going on. And even if I fucking did it, dude, that's a 100, that's a 100% J-Dog going to Pantera. You want the dog going to Pantera with you? It's 500 in the evening. All expenses paid. Ride there. Bruce for me and Lindsay fucking paid for. No money's coming out of my pocket, and I'm leaving with money in my pockets. 500 bucks a night, ticket bought, transportation, and beverages. That's the deal. Free? You think I'm going to have bullshit for fucking free? You're out of your fucking gourd, brah, brah. So, yeah, fully aware of that goddamn situation. Holy fuck, where the fuck did I leave off on this? No, that's so his girlfriend started taking... Talking to my wife, yep, 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 read that. By this point, mind you, the movie Lords of Chaos had come out. Oh, fuck. I, I'm, I'm aware. And now everybody thinks they're as cabal as can be, and fucking they're in the loop. You ain't in shit, bro, bro. You got a fucking half ass version with a goddamn fat boy playing Count Chalky that was 50% accurate. Get lost. You don't know shit. And this poser had the audacity to ask me, have you ever heard of Mayhem and Burzum? That is fucking annoying when you get a complete out-of-the-loop goddamn canoe and they come to you asking you obvious shit like, I got one for him. Holy fuck, I wonder if he knows this one. Which the only reason his dumb ass knows because he just saw last week a big-ass fucking Hollywood movie. 
Wasn't made in Hollywood, J-Dog. You know what the fuck ever. You know what the fuck I mean. It was in the goddamn theater. Big-ass fucking commercial outlet. Whatever the hell the equivalent is. Uh, yeah, heard of Mayhem Aburzo. He, ar he around this time uploads pictures of him wearing corpse paint on an Instagram talking about how true he is. Oh, fuck me. I never met anyone that goddamn bad. Like, just days later. Never heard of Nocturnal Mortal. Never heard of Mayhem Aburzo. Sees the movie, and all of a sudden they got corpse paint, and they're fucking part of the scene. I've, I've, I've met some pretty big-ass posers, but I never met one of that goddamn bad. He is but literally about three months before this, he didn't even know Mayhem. Actually, to be honest with you, the biggest fucking uh, person I have, I did have closest to this was that Andrew dude that I went to middle school slash high school with. Because in middle school, he was literally, no joke, he was literally telling me, oh man, those shirts are scary. And then ninth grade, first year of high school, freshman, he was wearing immolation shirts, immortal shirts, and I forget what else. Shit that I was goddamn wearing. I'm like, this but he refused to talk to me. Like he dude, if I was walking, if I was like right here and he was walking, he was like, like, I'm over here, right? He's like this. Walk past. Because he knew like I was gonna say something. Like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Meanwhile, this guy was wearing like he was a pure fucking skater, but not even like one of those kind of lack of better words, I don't think any of them are tough, but tougher skaters. Where they're kind of like those punkers slash crusty skaters. He was one of those clean cut. Wearing those little cartoony patches, like, like they look like goddamn Ren and Stimpy and shit on his pat on his uh, baggy fucking blue jeans, and just these nerdy like looking like yeah like that's the best way I can describe like Ren and Stimpy looking fucking t-shirts like total goddamn nerd right in the total goddamn bitch shit, and all of a sudden he's in this so he knew I was gonna say something so he refused to even say it. and yeah. And then what happens as soon as we graduated high school and I got the good word I know it's a hundred per fucking percent true. Is getting out of it. He's a born again Christian. He's selling all the shit on eBay. What I tell you, dude? And I said back then, I remember because people were asking me in high school, like, dude, just I was like, I know he's a fucking poser, dude, hundred percent a poser, just like this idiot you're talking about now. We're in current times. There's no way that this fool is going to be in this scene ten years from now. He just won't be, hundred percent guaranteed. That's why this gatekeeper. It's not really a gatekeeper, dude. It's just calling out people. It's like it's kind of like just rushing them along. Come on, man, just get out of this because you're not in Vegas. I'm trying to help you out. You're just wasting your time. You're wasting your money. You're wasting your ten years on something you could actually be enjoying because what you do enjoy is not this. Just trying to help you out. God damn it. Yeah. Where the fuck am? Do you know who Mayhem? When him and his girl came over, he asked me to show him his him my music room. So I'm showing him some, some of my stuff, and he literally says, I don't know, they still made vinyl. Yep, yep, yep. Got those guys that walk in the warehouse all the time. They still make records. Just drop your boxes off and get lost, canoe. Why are we even talking? He then asked me to let him borrow my leather vest with patches for him to take pictures in. Oh, my God, dude. Poser fucking central. To be honest with you, dude, I would have just punched this guy in the face and just rolled them right out my fucking front door. Man, I can't even have a canoe this as bad as you in my fucking house. At least me with Cable Guy, we didn't talk about goddamn music. You know what I mean? I kind of ended that conversation real quick. We talked about, because he owned his own business, and I mostly business shit, like investing money and shit like that. Not because not, not, obviously totally different business. He run the construction business. I run, well, you know what I fucking run. Um, so that's why it's a little bit more tolerable. This guy, I wouldn't even be able to stomach it. Can you borrow my shit? You gotten this two months ago? Do you even know who Mayhem was? Get lost, bozo. I give him a stern no. That you should. I told him he should make his own because he doesn't even know half of the bands on my best. Exactly, bro, town. Why you want to wear shit that you don't even... How do you know if you're going to even like it? You never even heard him. He always trying to have me listen to his most god-awful music. Bet he is. He's listening to, to Suicide Boys, Ghost Mane, and The Cure, and all that gay-ass shit. Yep, yep, yep. Pretty non-hetero. The other day, he sent me some bo some Bring Me the Horizon shit. Oh, my fucking God. Isn't that some twink core bullshit? And I straight up told him, dude, I'm not listening to that. About a week ago, Exum was playing not too far, and he ra and he rather drive about four hours to see some gay shit called Drab, <laughs> Drab Majesty. <laughs> Never heard of that one. Instead of going to see the almighty Exhumed. Yep, yep. He doesn't listen to real metal. I called him out the other day. I told him that, bro, you don't like this music. You just want people to think you do. Yep, yep, yep. 100%. He had, I wonder what did he say to that, though? 
He had shared a picture of Dark and Nocturne Slaughter Cult, and I asked him if he knew who that was. Surely didn't. And if he did, because he just YouTubed it fucking 10 minutes prior. And he said he didn't, but the pictures was cool. I'll give him at least this. At least he's not saying, yeah, I know, bro. At least he's admitting it. It's just he doesn't realize how fucking stupid he looks. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> you have more patience than I do. My back would have been broken up in the goddamn, uh, hey, can I borrow your vest? Or even slightly before that. He was asking about bands in the goddamn house in the metal room. This dude is the biggest poser ever, and I regret ever showing him anything because now he's out here wearing a satanic war master shirt but listening to the most gay shit ever. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty goddamn bad, especially, like, usually the poser, if he's wearing the satanic war master shirt or the dark and the slaughter cult, they're, they're going to at least, these days, they're going to at least YouTube it. Um, and the shows try to fit in. Like, you would have think he would have tried to go on to a Zoom, just because maybe he never heard of them, but since you brought it up, um, he probably heard uh, just just a bit. Oh, you like him? Fuck you! Yeah, I'm going that type of shit. Uh, the only reason probably he didn't is because it sounds like his his girlfriend that was hanging out with your wife. She probably wanted to go, and he's just pussy worked and can't fucking say no. But um, yeah, bro, town that's pretty goddamn bad. <laughs> I I mean I've met close to that bad, but maybe not quite that bad. Even Andrew might might have been a little bit better than that. He at least did actually go to the shows. Next goddamn pay question. This will probably take up the rest of the goddamn video. That's okay. Two pay today, and if that's every day's videos, fine by motherfucking me. Kenneth Zana. Gay dog, I've been shopping for my metal at, at HH for almost 10 years now. Mm -hmm. 10 years plus customer plus a pay question and a viewer. My kind of guy. Smoking that poser in that fucking story. And I'm a huge fan of it. It's what I like to hear. I'd like to know what made you start HH. And how hard was it? Uh, a Hell's Headbangers origin story. Uh, actually, I'll kind of kind of keep it up. Uh, there is a video. I did a, uh, if it's one of my early videos that I did, probably in the first six months, it's called just Google, you know, Justin Horrible, name of the channel, and Hell's Headbangers story time, I think it's called. There's that, but it's kind of a, like, I go into it elaborately, uh, how we started New York and Chase, you know, just trying to buy stuff for our personal collection, getting the wholesale rates. And then that's kind of how it started, but we needed a website to move it. I'm just giving you cliff notes. And then uh, the label part, Jim Kanye, a.k.a. Sadist, rest in peace. He was doing Dunslaughter and Schnauzer and whatever other fucking 10 million bands he was doing at the time, but he started Spawn of Satan. And he was do he had that recorded. Uh, the songs that he wanted to do with the split with Bloodsick, he asked us, came up to us at a show. Uh, hey, you, would you guys release my CD? And it's like, well, we don't, we don't, we never release CDs. He knew we were doing the distro shit. And I think he kind of thought we were planning on starting a label, even though we never talked about doing a label. Never, never even once got mentioned. And we're just like, oh, I don't, we're, we're, I don't know. Isn't that expensive? Whatever. He's like, well, the price of a thousand CDs is about a thousand dollars. And keep in mind, it was me, Eric, and Chase that did this. Grand. I was, I was uh, 16 when we started. So still a kid, but had a job at 13, like a 13 years old, had like a responsible fucking uh, teenager. Um, so had money put away. And once we heard that, we're like, fuck, a thousand. Each one of us could come up with a thousand easy. Now it wants to be between the three of us, $333 a piece, right? For a thousand discs, that's all it is. Yeah. And he's like, well, where do you, uh, where do you get a made? And she's like, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. And he did. Cause he, he, cause Jim has pressed CD before his own bands and shit like that prior. He just didn't want to press that one because he's like, I, I just don't want all thousand. He's like, I just want you press them and you give me 15%, give me 150 for free. That's generally the deal, the way it goes, especially for an underground new band. Um, so he's like, yeah, you'll have 850 to sell. And we're like, still, shit, okay. $1,000, you got 850 discs left. Sell them at 10 bucks, that's $8,500. That's, that's a hell of a profit. Now, Grand, that sounds great. The dog's loaded. Well, you got to move them, dumb, dumb. When you see some labels, they're sitting on a fucking thousand CDs. They move 100, they're sitting on 900 for 10 years. So it's like, yeah, it's a great business if, you, if everything's sold and sold fast. Not the case, goddammit. So keep that in mind. <laughs> um, so that's kind of how it started. But if you want the full breakdown story, yeah, it's, a, it's an older video. I do it. So that the whole, that's what the whole video is about. I mean, it's, I think it's only like a 16, 20 minute video, but it's, I, I think maybe I just did it on my own because I wasn't even doing the questions yet. It might have been the first week video I did, but it's still up. Uh, watch the goddamn oldie, goddamn it. Yeah, but the story is there. <laughs> also, I have to turn into purest fire with the burnt Bible pages on it and cores on it, chaos gods with the blood in the sleeve. So yeah, those are the two picture disc versions, 100 copies made. If you don't have those, you missed out. Uh, Purest Fire, probably my favorite demo of all time, that and Putrefaction Painful Death. 
And then Corazonic Chaos Gods, um, that is definitely one of my favorite albums of all fucking time. It's in the top 20 or some shit like that. Corazonic Chaos Gods, that was the last thing uh, Seth sings on both before Severe Torture started. Seth and Patrick uh, went on to go do Severe Torture. Um, yeah, those two Centurions, they were just initially on CDs. We reissued on CD, vinyl, first 100 on picture disc, like I said. And uh, that's some of my favorite shit of all time. That's up there with Deicide and Infest Dead for me, personally. So, well, that's just de definitely some of the greats. So, if you guys don't know that, that's just that's just a go out and buy, goddammit. Don't even need to check it out. I thought those were the coolest things ever. And those are some of my favorite releases ever to do. Um, that, like the Morticians, Exhumed Slaughter Call, the Cease Embalmer, there was blood everywhere. Um... What are some of my other favorites that you guys know I've done? Um, the Christians, Divine Empire, um, and, a, and a bunch of others. But yeah, like a lot of those, those grew up at, grew up as a kid listening to, and got to do it on vinyl. Those type of releases. I thought those were the coolest thing ever, and the commercial for it was was great too. Yeah, I wasn't involved in making the commercial. I think that was, to my knowledge, it was Eric and. Craig. Craig was the person in the uh, video, kind of like the character, like Vernon. I, I forget what the whole video is because there's the Hells. Did you ever see the Hells commercial? I'm sure it's still on YouTube where it's uh, advertising just Hells Headbangers. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's still out there. Uh, was it Hells Headbangers infomercial? That was years ago. But I'm pretty sure it's Eric recording it and Eric kind of coming up with the um, the ideas. I'm sure Craig threw in some ideas too. I mean, threw most of the ideas. I'm not even sure. Uh, but the character in it playing it with the mask and stuff was Craig. So, uh, but yeah, that's fuck, dude. That was a long time ago. I mean, the Saturnian was a long time ago, but the infomercial was definitely a long time ago. Um, but yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't present when those being made, but uh, they did it like sometime in the evening. I was probably at the gym or at home or some shit. Will you do stuff like that again? Uh, as far as like the, probably not like the burnt thing. Probably not. That didn't go over too well. I mean, it was a pain in the ass. Ashes everywhere. And some people are like, why, am I, why is my cover fucked up? That was uh, Eric coming up with a new idea as far as, like, you know, making the uh, uh, project a little more artsy. But, I mean, as far as, you know, how we did, like, you know, the Beast of Mockery with the cha uh, chainsaw blade on it, the Exhumed, uh, not the Exhumed, uh, it was supposed to be Exhumed, the Hemorrhage, but it turned out the Exhumed, the, I don't know what the fuck happened, Dale would take it forever. It became Nunslaughter nun Hemorrhage with the saw blade on the first hundred. Uh, Embalmer, there was blood everywhere with the fucking... Um, Cleaver Butcher's Knife on there, um, and a bunch of other, like, you know, uh, Beast of Mockery Destructor 10-inch with a razor wire around it. Um, as a whole, when you say we we'll do stuff like that, maybe. The only problem is that, that, that uh, it's just time restraints. You got to remember, with most of those, even by the time the Centurions, even that was squeezing it, it's like, ah, if you feel like doing it, Eric, I guess you could, you could do it, uh, is that there's so much to do now as opposed to a lot of the ones that we did, like the same, the the, um, the Nunslaughter Hemorrhage, the Beast of Mockery shit, that's when we are, the Nunslaughter Hemorrhage, we were still living in our parents' house when we did that. The Beast of Mockery, Destructor 10-inch, I think we were living to, in the house together, the three of us when we bought the house. I don't know if that was our parents' house days. It might have been, but I want to say it wasn't. But regardless, either one, it was. that was still the very, very early days where like, even myself, I had a day job. We, I, we, weren't even, we weren't even living off the hell shit. So it was like, we're doing like a release, like one release, I don't know what the average time, what it, or maybe one every three months or whatever. And damn sure it weren't stocking as much stuff, getting as much orders, the less responsibilities. We had no employees. It was just me or the chase, literally. There's, there's, a, there's a lot more at stake in that line, I'm not, you know, to do now. So it's a matter of uh, just the time to do it. Is not really there, but I, I wouldn't never say never. You know, I mean, maybe something will pop up that possibly, but I don't foresee us doing another thing like that anytime soon. Specifically, just yeah, just for because timing and it just it's just not physically possible at the moment with all the shit that's going on now. So I mean, look at like for example, I do this goddamn YouTube channel now. I didn't do this fucking 15, 20 years ago. Ten years ago, it's just going on only two. You know, so there's all these new new responsibilities popping up that uh, and there's only so many hours a day. So. Again, never say never, but it's it'll be very, very few in between, and there's nothing coming up anytime soon that I'm aware of that we're doing before. So that answers that. Guys, what's the search? You know what it is? When the God bots get answered in the morning later, goddammit.